Today we're taking a look at this digital microscope from Joy Allen's and normally when I do a tech review I start with an unboxing but we're going to skip that today because there's a lot to this device. There's a lot that it can do so I'm going to jump right into it and show you what it can do. I will assure you that it comes with these instructions to show you how to put it together. I really didn't look at the instructions too heavily. It's very easy to put together, mostly self-explanatory. And if you do need to check out these instructions, it's just a matter of read the step, do the step, and get the banana. But with that being said, let me get on with just showing you what this microscope can do. Uh, first things first, we do have this click switch that comes with it that you use this to turn it on and off with. And the on switch is right here. And we're going to see a welcome screen come up here. The nice thing is that I've got an HDMI cable run out here into a capture card so I can actually show you what we're seeing here um, full screen. And what we're not seeing now is the image because it needs light. And, and the reason we're not seeing anything is because it requires a lot of light. And that's why we've got these gooseneck lights here. We can actually focus those on our subject. And now we can see on our screen, and as we go full screen, we can see uh, our actual subject here. So now I can dial in closer and get that in focus, and we can see what we're looking at here. You can use this click switch to take the intensity up or down for the lighting. And again, like I said, the lighting has goosenecks so that we can uh, put the light directly on what we want to see or we can control the intensity by uh, angling it away or uh, putting it directly on however we need at the time. This digital microscope comes with three lenses. I've got one lens attached right now. This is the 90 to 300 millimeter that is attached right now. And it also has a uh, four to five millimeter range which this is for your really up close slides that you'll use and this is your um, 12 to 320 millimeter and changing out the lenses we've got these bolts on the side here you just loosen those up and then the lens comes out and then you can put your other lens in and then tighten these screws back in. Very easy. But as I change that lens, we can see that our uh, our viewing range is has to be changed. And I'll show you how to do that now. So on the back here, we've got this knob that we can loosen and uh, lift the entire lens up and down. So what I'll do is I'll take the I'll I'll loosen this slider knob here and lower the entire unit down the pole. Yeah, and I'll lower the entire unit down the pole until what I want to look at gets moderately in focus. So there is pretty close. So then I'll lock the knob back into place. And then I'll use this fine tuning to go up and down to bring it more into focus. And then I'll use this barrel knob here in the center to completely fine tune the focus. So now I'll go back to full screen and we can see now that as I turn the barrel knob, we can really fine tune and get in on the, the fine detail. But overall, that's how it's done. Very easy to do. So this unit also includes this remote, and you can use this to get into the menu of the screen here. I'm not going to delve too deep into it, but if you push the uh, menu button here, it brings up the uh, on-screen menu. And you can go through those menu items and set everything up. It's pretty self-explanatory.
On the front of the screen, we do have these buttons here, so you can control the menu of the screen that way if maybe your batteries are dead in the remote, but you can use these to control the menu if you so choose. I will note that there is a button here that allows you to take photos. That's if you plug in the uh, micro SD card in the back, you can save an image, but I'm recording everything through OBS Studio through the HDMI output back here, so uh, this is really kind of not really necessary for how I'm using it. And one other thing that I will note is that you can change the mode from video to image it, with this button right here. That is if you would want to record a video um, as opposed to just taking a snapshot of what you're working with. So now we'll take a look at some things under this microscope with the different lenses that are included with it. And right now I'm using the uh, 90 millimeter to 300 millimeter lens. And here we're taking a look at this coin and we can see that we can see some pretty fine detail on that. I'm going to flip it up on its side and we can go in and change our focus here. And these are the side these are the side divots of the coin. And uh, and here is the other side of the coin. I want to go in closer. Yeah. So you can really dial in on the detail. Now we're looking at a Raspberry Pi W with the 90 to 300 millimeter lens. To give you an idea of scale, this is a micro USB port here. And this is a mini HDMI port. Oh, uh, let's get in there. Yeah, that's our mini HDMI port. Pretty impressive if you ask me. And here we're super zoomed in on that micro USB port. Here is the head of a ballpoint pen with the uh, 90 to 300 millimeter lens. And here we're looking at the tip of a construction screw with the 90 to 300 millimeter lens. So I've switched over to the 12 to 320 millimeter lens here. And as you can see, I had to take the lens a lot closer to get the subject in focus here. But these are the kinds of images that we can get with that lens. And as you can see, we can get really close and look at quite a bit of detail. I think I can get even closer with this lens. Yeah, we're really getting close with this stuff now. Here we're looking at the Raspberry Pi W, and this is one of our micro USB ports. This is so close that I don't know. Yep, here we got it in focus, but, but this lens gets to the point where this is going to be too close for uh, even computer board work. Here is the head of the ballpoint pen, and I'm trying to hold it steady with my hand, and as you can see, it's so zoomed in that we almost can't get a good focus on it this close. I can come back up a little bit, 
But yeah, this is the head of the ballpoint pen here. And here is the head of a construction screw. You can see that it's so fine-tuned at this point that uh, when we get on the ridges of the screw, the body of the screw actually comes out of focus. And this is our last lens. It's a four to five millimeter lens. This is going to be used to uh, take a look at cellular things on glass slides here. And to use this, it needs so much light that we have this backlight kit that comes with it. To use this backlighting box, we have to unplug this cord going in that lights the gooseneck lights and plug it into the port back here and that gives us lighting to look at these slides. Okay, so now we're looking at the epidermis of an onion. It's pretty wild. And this slide says pine stem. Here's a compound eye. It says musca domestica. I don't know what that is. This is a honeybee worker leg composite. And here is our last slide. This is a honeybee wing. So as far as my final thoughts on the Joy Allen's digital microscope, well, I think it's cool. I like it, and it does what it's supposed to do. This does come with the disclaimer that I really don't have a metric for reviewing this against any other digital microscopes, as this is the first one that I've ever used. But as far as using it goes, I really do like it, and I have enjoyed it quite a bit. I could see a lot of kids being into this as a fun educational device, and I could see it being very useful for people who do soldering on small motherboards and really need to get in there and see the fine details, not to mention people like coin collectors and stamp collectors who need to get in and inspect the uh, kinds of imperfections that you would see in those kinds of items. But that's all I've got to say about this one. Thanks for watching. That's it for now, and I'll see you next time.